In this video, I'll be discussing phase diagrams. This topic is directly related to heating and cooling curves, which I discussed in a previous video. I highly recommend going back to watch that or watching it if you haven't already. Our objectives are to identify key portions of the phase diagram and to use a phase diagram to determine the particular phase of a substance at a given temperature and pressure. As you'll recall from a previous video, Cooling and heating curves can be obtained by taking a substance at a given temperature and applying heat. At low temperatures and no heat added, the substance will be in a solid phase, generally speaking. After some heat is added and the substance reaches its melting point, the solid and liquid phases will be in equilibrium. After intermolecular forces are sufficiently disrupted in the solid, the substance will be in a liquid phase. As heat is added, it raises the temperature of the liquid. This happens until the substance reaches its boiling point at which the liquid and gas phases are at equilibrium. All of the heat added when the, temp when the mixture is at its boiling point is used to disrupt intermolecular forces in the liquid phase. Once these intermolecular forces are disrupted, additional heat added raises the temperature of the gaseous phase, in this case, the steam. This behavior can be captured using a pressure temperature phase diagram. At a particular temperature, um, or at a fixed pressure, as we increase temperature, that is what we were looking at on the previous slide, going from solid to the melting point of the solid, liquid to the boiling point of the liquid, and then gas. At that fixed point, or at that fixed pressure, it would be fixed if my drawing wasn't so bad, but at that fixed pressure, um, we can obtain the cooling curve that I showed on the previous slide. Now, if the cooling curve was repeated at multiple values of pressure, that is what gives us the phase diagram. So here are the key regions of the phase diagram that you need to know. The first are these three regions of phase stability, the solid, the liquid, and the gas phase. These are the regions of pressure and temperature where specific, where that phase is most um, stable. The next key feature are these lines separating the phases. For example, the solid liquid line is the, is where the solid or is the pressure are the pressures and temperature values for which the solid and liquid phases are in equilibrium. Going from solid to liquid, meaning increasing the temperature across this line is referred to as melting whereas going from liquid to solid is referred to as freezing. For both of these phase changes, the, um, the liquid and solid are in equilibrium. Similar analysis can be done for the liquid gas uh, line, which indicates the point at which the substance vaporizes if going from liquid to gas, or condenses if going from gas to liquid. Another key point um, is the line between the solid and gas, which is referred to as solid gas equilibrium line, which indicates processes of sublimation going from solid to gas or deposition going from gas to solid. In all of these cases, this line is described by a set value of pressure and temperature. So that means that if within, let's consider this solid liquid line, if the pressure is raised from this point to this point, that means that the temperature must increase slightly to maintain equilibrium. Another key feature is referred to as the triple point, which is the point where solid, liquid, and gas are all in equilibrium. You'll notice this only takes place at one point on the phase diagram, meaning one very specific set of pressure and temperature. At no other pressures or temperatures does the triple point exist. 
The other relevant point here is the critical point. The critical point lies at the end of the liquid gas equilibrium line. This is the maximum temperature point a liquid and its vapor can coexist together in equilibrium. In other words, it's the upper limit of the liquid gas equilibrium line. At the critical temperature, molecules have a relatively high kinetic energy, which leads to weak intermolecular forces. This means that the liquid is no longer stable at these temperatures. Let's look at a phase diagram for water. You'll notice right away that this phase diagram has a different characteristic from the generic diagram I showed on the previous slide, and that's that the slope of the ice uh, solid and liquid water interface is negative. The reason for this is because ice is less dense than water. And for reasons we won't get into now, that causes the, the solid liquid equilibrium line to have a negative slope. Now, again, if we pick at a fixed pressure here, say 101 kil kilopascals or one atmosphere right here, we can correlate this to the cooling curve is in heating curves. At a low temperature, the substance is in the solid. You can think about this as 0.1 shown in the diagram below, right here. As heat is added, the solid warms up until it reaches its melting point, which is at the solid liquid equilibrium line. That's happening here on at value uh, two. Then as more heat is added, the liquid heats up, again, this is constant pressure, until it reaches its boiling point, which as we know for water is 100 degrees Celsius. So that's showing our transition through phase three all the way to point four. Now at point four, the liquid and gas are in equilibrium with each other. Until the liquid or heat is added until the intermolecular forces in the liquid are overcome, which allows them to transition into the gas phase. And additional heat added will just raise the temperature of the substance in the gas phase. Now let's practice interpreting the phase diagram of a different substance, CO2. Pause the video and predict the most stable state at these different pressure and temperature points. Also, consider the approximate melting point of CO2 at 100 atmospheres and the approximate boiling point at 40 atmospheres. When you're done, pause the, unpause the video and we'll review the answers. So here we're looking at 70 atmospheres, which is roughly here on the phase diagram. At negative 80 Celsius, that's the point we're looking at, and the most stable phase of the CO2 is the solid. At negative 20 Celsius and 70 atmospheres, the most stable phase of CO2 is a liquid, because again, that point rests in this liquid region. And then at 20 degrees Celsius and negative or and 70 um, atmospheres, the most stable state is still a liquid because we're still in this region in the middle corresponding to the liquid phase. Let's answer the next question, which is the approximate melting point of CO2 at 100 atmospheres. Here's our 100 atmosphere mark. When we're looking for the melting point, we're looking at for the point at which the solid and liquid are at equilibrium. Remember that that is on this line, the boundary between the two phases. If we were to estimate the value of this, I would say it's between negative 60 and negative 40 degrees, but closer to negative 60. So possibly something like approximately negative 55 Celsius would be a reasonable answer. 
Now let's estimate the boiling point, approximately, of CO2 at 40 atmospheres. We trace over from 40 atmospheres to the liquid gas line because that's what we're using to approximate the boiling point. It will be this point at which the liquid and gas are at equilibrium at 40 atmospheres. If we draw this line down and approximate, I would say that the boiling point, the approximate boiling point of CO2 at this pressure will be approximately five degrees Celsius. Now importantly, the boiling point will change as a function of pressure based on the position of this solid or of this liquid gas equilibrium line. In this video, we've discussed the key objectives of identifying regions of the phase diagram, as well as using the phase diagram to determine particular states of a substance at a given pressure and temperature. Here's a blank phase diagram for you to practice with. Try to label these regions shown below on the blank diagram. You can always check your work against the phase diagram I showed earlier in the video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.